This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Good evening. Boeing aircraft is under federal government orders tonight to inspect the wiring on hundreds of its passenger jets. This follows at least one plane crash in which faulty wiring is suspected and accusations that Boeing built planes highly reputed for quality are now coming off the assembly line too fast and without enough quality control. CBS News correspondent Mark Phillips has been investigating. It's the most sweeping demand for aircraft inspection and repair that the Federal Aviation Administration has made in living memory. It affects every one of four types of aircraft built by Boeing in the past eight years. The airlines have 25 days to inspect the wiring on a total of 741 planes. They include Boeing 737s, 747s, 757s, and 767s. They'll be looking for the type of wiring problem that is suspected in the crash of a British Midlands plane earlier this month. The suspected problem in the 737 involves wiring which runs from each engine to the cockpit. The fear is that in some planes the wiring got crossed so that a fire in one engine would trip the wrong indicator on the control panel, leading the pilot to switch on the wrong extinguisher system and possibly to shut down the wrong engine. Another problem has emerged in Boeing's newer 757 series. Here on some planes, wires were crossed leading from the cargo holds to the cockpit. A fire in one section of the hold would trip the warning system for another area. And again, the wrong extinguisher could be activated. What this FAA directive amounts to is not just a problem with a plane or a type of plane, but a problem that runs through most of a manufacturer's entire line. Boeing aircraft in Seattle has been trying to meet demand by building more complicated planes faster. The length of wires, the number of connectors, the number of color coatings uh, goes up, and that simply complicates the problem. Training new unskilled workers also complicates the problem. The first job I had in there was running wire bundles in and connecting them up to the, to the E-rack area without having the foggiest idea where the stuff went. Today's FAA directive is not just a demand to fix the airplanes, but a warning to Boeing to fix its operation. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Washington. The Air Force today said at least 17 of 19 people aboard a military tanker died when it crashed on takeoff from Dias Air Force Base near Abilene, Texas. A witness said the refueling jet, quote, never got off the ground before it crashed in a ball of flames. The plane was based near Marquette, Michigan. It was en route from Dias to the Hickam base in Hawaii on a training mission. Oliver North went on trial today. New legal hurdle, picking a jury. Main charges against North in the weapons for Iran, where did the money go case, were dropped weeks ago when the Reagan-Bush administration refused to supply certain documents for the trial. Yesterday, the judge ruled President Bush won't have to comply with North's subpoena to testify, won't have to clarify what he did or didn't know and did or didn't do. CBS News law correspondent Rita Braver reports now on opening day of North's criminal trial on charges of lying, shredding, and falsifying, and the wider constitutional issues. The first day of trial brought the very dilemma that lawyers for both Oliver North and the independent counsel predicted when Congress forced North to testify in the summer of 1987, finding jurors who did not hear or read North's statements. For example, his admission that he lied to Congress about his aid to the Contras. I will tell you right now, counsel, and all the members here gathered, that I misled the Congress. Because North testified under a grant of congressional immunity, nothing he said in those hearings is allowed to be considered at his trial. Today, Judge Gerhard Gazelle announced that in order to ensure an impartial jury, he'll select only people who never saw North's testimony. So far, out of 54 potential jurors, only seven qualified. You want to find a jury that uh, was not tainted by the immunized um, testimony. I think they'll be able to do that. In the Watergate proceedings, they found an unbiased jury. Once the North jury is chosen, the trial could run five months or more. North faces charges that include obstruction of and lying to members of Congress and other government officials, violating the tax laws, destruction of government documents, conversion of contra funds to his own use, and accepting a free security fence. The trial will include testimony from dozens of witnesses from both in and out of the Reagan administration, perhaps even the former president himself. But whether or not he ever appears... This is going to be a commentary on the Reagan administration. Uh, people are going to say he was inattentive 
to uh, certain public duties. In fact, as he did on Capitol Hill, North's feisty counsel, Brendan Sullivan, is expected to portray his client as a loyal presidential staffer and to fight off suggestions that North was acting on his own. I find this offensive. I find you engaging in a personal attack on Colonel North and your... But prosecutor John Kecker will try to keep the jury focused on a simple premise. North broke the law. He'll stand for one of a series of overzealous staffers who did what he thought was right, what he rationalized as what the president thought was right. If convicted on all counts, North could be sentenced to up to 60 years in jail and $3 million in fines. Rita Braver, CBS News, at the Federal Courthouse in Washington. President Bush used the aircraft carrier America in Norfolk today as backdrop to talk up ethics and talk tough about defense contract cheaters. This coincides with the still unfolding investigation of a defense contract fraud scandal inside and outside the Pentagon during the Reagan-Bush administration U.S. military buildup. Today, his voice still hoarse from a cold, Mr. Bush pledged to crack down on waste and fraud by big defense contractors. My message to them will be just this simple. Don't think it's just anyone out there. Think it's your son or daughter. And remember that their lives depend on the things you make. And if you're not ready to care that much and work that hard, you are not ready to do business with the United States government. Alaska's record-breaking cold is sliding across Canada and into the northern lower United States tonight. While spring fever warmed much of the nation, forecasters said zero cold may stretch from Washington state to New England by week's end, with a cooling trend eventually felt as far south as Florida and the Mexican border. Jerry Bowen has the front page weather story. Fairbanks, Alaska was in a fog again today, an ice fog, coupled with temperatures of 40 to 50 below that's making life perilous on city streets. Schools have been closed, non-essential state workers told to stay home, garbage collection canceled. Residents asked not to drive. We're trying to keep people off the streets as much, much as possible. We haven't declared a civil emergency yet, but if it gets much worse, we're seriously considering it. The city is losing police cars faster than police can answer accident calls. A fender bender is akin to a social call here, and already there's a two-week backup at the auto repair shops. The fan belts are breaking, they're overheating, freezing up, uh, tires are going flat, you name it. Uh, steering wheels are breaking off, um, dashes are coming apart, the plastic just, just shatters and just it's real brittle when it's 50 below. Well, this is heaven for you, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. National Guard supplies are being ferried in today to Birch Creek, a remote village 150 miles from Fairbanks, where only a three-day supply of food remains. In Fairbanks, one grocery's been out of milk because of impassable roads due to high winds and the Arctic chill. And that chill is on the move. In the greater Seattle area, temperatures are in the 30s now, headed for the teens by the weekend, and the forecast calls for up to a foot of snow in some areas. In Chicago, where golfers played in 60-degree weather today, the forecast calls for the 30s soon, and the chill is moving to Texas. It's near 80 in Dallas, but the forecast says it will be below 20 by the weekend. That's the weather system coming out of Alaska, where the forecast calls for more of the same. More temperatures, 40 and 50 degrees below zero, more ice fog. But perhaps next week, a break. Perhaps more than a peak at the sun. Jerry Bowen, CBS News. Fairbanks. And still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, correspondent David Dow on a spreading war against automatic assault weapons, and David Browning on some hospital workers dogging it. Guess what? There's no bathroom on the bus. Relax. But diarrhea usually comes back. Took the Imodium AD, didn't you? Yeah, but just a little cup. Perfect. Imodium AD often stops diarrhea with one dose, instead of all those spoonfuls you may need of the leading remedy. I'm in a rest stop. You coming? Nope, I'm fine. Imodium AD. It can make your first attack of diarrhea your last.
It's an amazing thing. Hallmark is offering an empty little red box, an empty little cardboard box for Valentine's Day. And people are excited and they're buzzing about it. A little cardboard empty thing. Zero things are in there. No things, nothing. What a crazy world. Do we need further proof? Oh, forgot to tell you. The little red box comes connected to this cuddly bear. $3.50 with any $10 Hallmark purchase. But the box is empty. You have to fill it. Crazy world, crazy world. The truth is, heart specialists concerned about aspirin irritation recommend Ecotrin over Bayer to help prevent second heart attack. Consult your doctor about the only brand of aspirin that's safety coated to protect your stomach. That's Ecotrin, and that's the truth. <laughs> Time for a quick break and one of my favorite quick snacks, Sunsweet Pitted Prunes. Surprised? I don't know why. They're good for you and they're delicious. Hmm. Rounder, plumper, Sunsweet. What seemed a straight-ahead route mapped by California voters in the last election took another detour today, and it's a money matter that will be studied carefully by organizers of auto insurance campaigns around the country. Correspondent John Blackstone reports. It was not one of California's freeway shootings, but millions of drivers in the state may feel they've been ambushed. California's biggest car insurance company, State Farm, has announced a rate increase of almost 10%. Just when Californians thought they were about to get lower rates, mandated by Proposition 103, passed by voters in November, but now being reviewed by the state Supreme Court. It seems to me they're throwing the gauntlet down uh, to the Supreme Court and to the legislature. Uh, they're basically saying, uh, we're going to do what we want to do. State Farm says it needs the increase to stop losing money on car insurance. We're at a point now where the losses are such that we simply have to to take action to bring those rates to a more adequate level. But the level of industry profits is at the heart of the consumer revolt that started with Proposition 103. It would require companies to justify rate increases in more detail than they have ever done before. They have been in a paradise of profitable addiction for so long that they can't believe that Prop 103's happened to them. And the effects of Prop 103 have started to spread from California across the country. In at least 14 other states, campaigns to reform car insurance are underway. We're working on a bill to bring insurance rates down in Maryland. Here, volunteers have knocked on 50,000 doors. Insurance companies are planning their own $93 million campaign. We're not looking at a public relations campaign in terms of advertising. We're looking at a public relations campaign to get information to consumers. When Prop 103 passed, consumer groups celebrated, but with the rates still going up, the reform battle has just begun. John Blackstone, CBS News, Los Angeles. Innumeracy is a word meaning mathematical illiteracy. Just last week, researchers reported that American students often leave school without knowing enough math to lead productive lives. A study out today measured how our students compared with youth from other countries in math and science. National correspondent Phil Jones reports. I will let you look at your average and what you are to get on your report card. Any question about that? The math and science report card for 13-year-olds in six countries came in today, and American students flunked. This report suggests that unless we're careful, the Buck Rogers of the 1990s is going to be living in Seoul, Korea, instead of Chattanooga or Los Angeles. Indeed, in math, it was no contest between South Korean students at the top and Americans dead last, trailing such countries as Ireland and Spain. 78% of the Korean students were able to solve a complex math problem, while only 40% of the American students could. This despite the fact that two-thirds of the American students considered themselves quite good at math. It was the same story when it came to science. Only 42% of America's public and private school students could perform and understand a science experiment compared to 73% for South Koreans. I'd say the report really tells us that uh, the United States loses by the time we get to the eighth grade. Students in South Korea and the U.S. reported about the same amount of homework, but American kids spent more time watching television. The study also revealed that South Korean parents provide more direction and encouragement to their students than American parents do. Their parents are non-academic and make fun of mathematics and make fun of all knowledge. And then they're distra distressed when their children also make fun of mathematics. The authors of this report say there are no quick fixes to save these 13-year-old students who could well become a lost generation in a high-tech world. Phil Jones, CBS News, Washington.
When my arthritis pain acts up, even little things are a big effort. But I don't take aspirin anymore. I take Advil. Advil is the brand many doctors recommend for hours of relief from minor arthritis pain. You know, just one Advil is as effective as two regular aspirin. And Advil doesn't upset my stomach the way aspirin sometimes can. So now, I don't even have to think about arthritis. Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. For Vanish Drop-Ins, the Bull Brothers. I pop and Vanish Drop-Ins and look so clean. Yeah. So drop in, Vanish Drop-Ins. Vanish Drop-Ins are here. Just drop one in the tank to help keep your bowl looking clean and smelling fresh for weeks. And since Drop-Ins dissolve completely, you never touch them again. What could be easier? So drop in, Vanish Drop-Ins. And when you brush, try Dual Action Liquid Vanish. It freshens the bathroom and it outcleans Lysol on tough rust stains below the waterline. Liquid Vanish makes your toilet sing. Remember this little number. It's just 150 calories, no fat, and it tastes fabulous. Hmm, plus, this little number is going to help me get into this little number. Now you can win $50,000 instantly. See package for details. Your sure, doctor said it's heartburn. Heartburn and high blood pressure. He wants him to cut out salt. For heartburn, take sodium-free Riopan Plus 2. It starts neutralizing acid in 10 seconds. Feeling better, Dad? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Riopan Plus 2. Sodium-free. Works fast. The dangerous scramble is on to get out of Afghanistan. Convoys of Soviet troops moved north today. Their retreat covered by rocket attacks on rebel-controlled Afghan villages. And the last U.S. diplomats flew out of Kabul in a chartered jet. Passengers saying they narrowly missed a mid-air collision with a Soviet transport plane. Barry Peterson is on the scene in the Afghan capital. Kabul is a city on edge, worried about what comes after almost a decade of Soviet military presence finally ends. The Soviet commanding general vowed today he will not leave behind disaster or misfortune. But he also made it clear that once his men are gone, the Afghan government fights for its life on its own. Afghan soldiers will face a situation as brutal as any the Soviets are leaving behind. In one recent incident, Afghan government soldiers were overrun by Mujahideen who staged an instant trial. The sentence was carried out instantly. Many fear this is just a taste of what is to come once the Soviets are gone. Soviet officials offered fresh expressions of confidence today that the government army can prevail against the Mujahideen guerrillas, but the Soviets are taking no chances. In their last days here, they are flooding this city with tons of supplies. Every few minutes, huge Soviet transport planes make the perilous approach into Kabul airport. They are escorted by helicopter gunships throwing off flares to attract the American-made heat-seeking Stinger missiles used by the guerrillas. The supplies are quickly unloaded, the planes quickly turned around and sent back often ferrying troops out. Kabul is laying in stores for a siege. U.S. embassy officials packed up and left today and expressed confidence that they would be back, perhaps under another government, perhaps soon. We're sorry to leave Afghanistan, but we will return again when uh, it was possible to have uh, peace and freedom in this country and when the conflict ends. By some indications, the Soviets will be forced to fight their way out. The battle to clear the Salang Highway is still very much on. They say the attacks are needed to keep the highway open and may well continue until the last Soviet convoy has crossed the border out of Afghanistan and is safely home. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Kabul. A court in Iran today sentenced four radio officials to be flogged and jailed for broadcasting a program about Iranian women that offended the Ayatollah Khomeini. A woman interviewed on the program reported he said she identified more with a character on a TV soap opera than she did with the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. The Ayatollah called that shameful and said those responsible could be hanged. But the court ruled that the insult was not deliberate. So it sentenced the radio directors to 50 lashes and up to five years in prison. It took 2,000 years, but a revolutionary discovery is changing the way men think about coloring their gray hair. It's called Just for Men, from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men, and in five minutes, shampoo out. Your gray is blended away, leaving your natural-looking color. Five minutes. Here, look at me.
Just for Men leaves your hair looking healthy and fuller, and it won't fade or wash out. Just for Men, in the men's hair care section. A recent test compared the Toyota Tercel stick shift, the Hyundai Excel stick shift, and the Subaru Justy automatic. But we made it tougher on the Justy. Because you don't shift the Justy, and its ECVT automatic makes it accelerate and pass quicker than the Hyundai and the Toyota. Proof that Subaru can beat the competition with one arm tied behind its back. Special incentives to dealers help you make your best deals. Phone calls, deadlines, stomach complaints, my job, and my Lanta 2. Double strength my Lanta 2 with nearly double the acid neutralizing power of any leading regular strength brand. Because my life <laughs> takes my Lanta 2. No tough sinus cold is going to sideline these guys. Congestion, pressure, New Maximum Strength Tristan is tougher to sweep away congestion, pressure, and pain. And it won't make you drowsy when you can't call in sick. Call on Tristan. Political action today in Los Angeles reflected the lingering horror over war on the nation's streets and a schoolyard slaughter that claimed the lives of five children. As correspondent David Dow reports, it is just the latest step in a growing assault on the assault rifle. One dead, three injured, the latest victims of gunfire from an AK-47, the same type of semi-automatic assault rifle used in Stockton's schoolyard shooting spree two weeks ago. It seems that not a day goes by in California or in this country where there's not another terrible uh, situation where an innocent victim has lost their life. In fact, the Stockton murders and the growing use of military-type weapons in gang-related killings seem to be generating momentum for new gun control laws. Typically, semi-automatic assault rifles are treated as hunting rifles, meaning there's very little restriction on their sale. But today, in the nation's second largest city, Los Angeles council members unanimously moved toward banning the sale of assault guns. We do have a war going on on our streets, on the streets of our cities and something far-reaching needs to be done to control these weapons. Even the city's police chief, an opponent of most gun control efforts, wants action against assault weapons. And bans are also being proposed in Congress and the legislatures of Florida and California. We'll lose this fight, as right as it is, if in fact people do not communicate that they think it's gotten to the point of lunacy. But members of the so-called gun lobby seem determined to oppose any ban on assault rifles. Their past efforts have been successful. A law will certainly keep them out of the hands of law-abiding people, but will do absolutely nothing to keep them out of the hands of criminals. Meanwhile, voluntary efforts to eliminate assault rifles have had mixed results. While some gun stores have stopped stocking them, others report booming sales. And a councilman's plea to Los Angeles residents to turn in assault weapons for money has netted fewer than 70. David Dow, CBS News, Los Angeles. First Lady Barbara Bush made a photo opportunity call to a Washington area soup kitchen and shelter today. She talked up the need for volunteers to help the homeless. She helped make sandwiches herself, distributed cookies to the children of homeless, and read them a story. Yourself. That's what life is all about, and it's easy when you have the best bladder control protection. Depend Undergarments has special layers of absorbency that won't bunch or sag, and elastic legs for a better fit. They're the best protection and the best way for you to get back into life. Hey! <laughs> get back into life with Depend. When it comes to buying a laxative, I would buy Dulcolax. Mary Galdi talks about Dulcolax. It's predictable. It's very gentle. Dulcolax, tablets and suppositories. I would not use anything but Dulcolax because it works. The day may come when every cooktop range and oven will let you clean up this easily. But isn't it nice to know Whirlpool cooktops, ranges and ovens will let you do it today? Introducing Total Raisin Bran. Other raisin brands have only one-fourth as much vitamin nutrition. And eating a raisin bran with only one-fourth the vitamin nutrition you could get is like having Mount Rushmore. Hey. With only one precedent.
New Total Raisin Bran is the only raisin bran with 100% of 11 vitamins and minerals. Total Nutrition has finally come to Raisin Bran. It's a dog's life, and all these particular dogs do is show up regularly and perhaps lie around on the bed. But people are delighted to see them. David Browning explains why. Very long suffering, I'm sure. It's eight in the morning, and Monty, the golden retriever, is getting spruced up and ready for work. Golden retriever number two, Nicole, arrives on the job. And there's golden retriever number three, Saffron. Monty, Nicole, and Saffron exchange pleasantries and then get down to business. Just another dog day on the job at Huntington Memorial Hospital. What's the matter, there Monty? You are. Damn right, you there knew. You are. These are dog therapists here to visit patients and spread a little cheer. Give me five, money. Did you see that? That's right. Patients like Mike Provenzano, who's going in for back surgery in just a few moments. You gonna wish me luck in the next hour, guy? Huh? They're not going in with bedpans or jabbing needles or drawing blood or doing any of the things that go on in the hospital. And they just arrive there and they lie on the beds. They ask nothing in return. I'll take a dog over a needle. Anytime. Paul Lopez is laid up with a broken leg. Come on, Nikki, you've done this before. Cheryl Howe has multiple sclerosis. She'll walk, you can pull her up to you and she'll give you a hug. Come here, honey. Let's get to work. Oh, I was real depressed yesterday, and so um, I asked to see a dog. Some answers to some obvious questions. No, you don't have to see a dog if you don't want to. Yes, it's okay for the dog to be on the bed if it's washed and lying on a clean sheet. And no, there are no accidents. The dogs are trained to go in the bushes outside. Yeah, it's hard to get anything into your room in the hospital, much less a dog. Bob Sibley is in the hospital with a pinched nerve. No, no, we had a right Chesapeake right. Bay Retriever. The animals often bring to mind happy memories of animals that they've known in their life. It gives them an opportunity to talk about something that's pleasant, a positive memory. Good morning, Monty. The dog patrol is a big hit with hospital staff and visitors, too. Hi, Nikki. So far, it's an experiment to see if the dogs might help a bit where medicine leaves off. We definitely have seen significant improvement in patient uh, recovery. Just, it's, it's sparked something in people. Gently on Judy, gently sneaky down. Judy Gullery thinks the dogs make a difference, too. She has cancer. It's, it's a fleshly thing that you can hug and just the closeness there, you know. Yeah, and I like holding her. And as we leave Monty and Nikki and Saffron, consider all this from the dog point of view. Where else do they feed you well, pet you constantly, and actually encourage you to jump up on the bed? This is work? David Browning, CBS News, Pasadena, California. And that's tonight's CBS Evening News. Dan Rather, see you tomorrow. Good night. And I'm Kathleen Sullivan. Tomorrow we'll cover Princess Diana's visit to New York. Also, Bianca Jagger and Robert Duvall from Lonesome Dove on CBS This Morning. This is CBS.